Hello and welcome back to BS Rugby. The Six Nations kicks off tomorrow and I'm so, so excited for it. Six teams battling against one another to see who can become champions of Europe once again. Of course, Wales go into the competition as defending champions. Italy come in with a very young squad. The Irish and the French come off huge wins against the All Blacks, while England, with a hell of a lot of injuries, have an exciting young core to their squad. Who's going to take the title this year? Are we going to see a grand slam? Who are going to be the key players? Let's get into it. Just before we look at who I think is going to finish in sick, if you enjoy this video, make sure to give it a like, subscribe as well. It's free to do, keeps you up to date with everything going on in the channel. Of course, over the weekend, we're going to be doing watch longs for all the games. Link down below for the first two tomorrow, which sees Ireland take on Wales go live about two for that. And then we have... England heading up to Murrayfield to take on Scotland. Kickoff is at quarter to five for that one. So we go live at about half past four. So join me live for them and we'll do one on Sunday, of course, for France. But link in the description, set your mind on that. Let's start off then with who I think is going to finish in sixth. And no surprise to anyone, I think it's going to be Italy in sixth. Now, this Italian squad is a really young squad, of course. New head coach in Kieran Crowley. He's come in, taken over from Franco Smith. I did do a deep dive on this one with a former Inter Italy international. So make sure to check that out. Link in the description down below. But we spoke about Kieran Crowley, his impact on the team, his professionalism and what he could bring to the team. Take a listen to this and see what you think. I think what he's trying, what he will try and what he will bring to the environment is... Um... You know, uh, it's just part of, an, of of enjoyment. I mean, it's difficult to enjoy your rugby when you're lo losing week in and week out. Um, so I think yes, what what he needs to. He's a very relaxed person. Um, he he lets out a good energy, um, which is obviously what the players need, what they need, what the players thrive on. I mean, there is pressure. Six Nations to compete in the Six Nations. There's pressure. There's pressure on getting results. The public are demanding results. And the players are aware of that. So there we go. Those were the thoughts of Roland on Kieran Crowley. Italy go into this one, as I said, with a really young squad. And last year, actually, in attacking senses, they looked quite good. Their stats, certainly in terms of possession and territory, were very, very good. The problem was they just couldn't finish their chances. And they just could not defend whatsoever, which isn't a great combination for a rugby side. But they were getting to really good positions. And maybe due to a lack of maturity, experience and exposure at this level perhaps that's what really let them down now do i believe they're going to get a single win this year i just can't see where that's going to come from but i do think we'll continue to see that building of their team we will continue to see the likes of stephen varney and paolo gavbisi get ball in hand keep an eye out on Monty Ioane, been on the wing for Benetton over the last few years now, but over the last couple of seasons, he's absolutely lit up the URC. And in last year's Six Nations, he was a shining light for them. Keep an eye out on him. I think he is going to be an exceptional star for them for many years to come. But I'm going to put Italy in sixth. As always, let me know your predictions in the comments down below. Let's head on then to fifth position. And just before I put my team in here, I would just want to say that I believe that the next five teams could potentially win the Six Nations. That's how tight it is. Maybe Wales just about sneaking into there. But in fifth, I've decided to go with... I've gone with England. I've gone with England. Now, as I just said, I think any team between fifth and first could win the Six Nations. But I just think that the fixture list is a really, really tough one for England and with the injuries. And, you know, people will talk about Owen Farrell, wondering what he brings to the team, but his leadership alongside Marcus Smith, would allow Marcus Smith to thrive. I'm so excited to see what Marcus Smith can do. I think he's an amazing talent, but does he have the experience? Does he have the experience of heading to a Murray field? And let's be honest, he's going to get booed. He's going to get shouted. He's going to be called all sorts of things. Can he deal with that pressure? The pressure on the likes of Freddie Stewart, our fullback, although he excelled in the autumns, there's going to be a lot of pressure on him for sure. The centre partnership, of course, Henry Slade and Elliot Daly not played all that much together. You look on the wing, they put Joe Marchant on there for the first game against Scotland. I just think that the fixture list, the way that it goes for them, having to go to Paris, having to go to Dublin, is just going to affect them a lot. And I do believe, as a Welshman, I've always got to back my boys to beat England. So I think we will go to Twickenham and get a job done there. So I do think that England could win this Six Nations. And that's just a reflection of how tight it is that I have put them down in fifth. 
But players to keep an eye out on, of course, the big one is Marcus Smith. Huge fan of his. I think he's an extremely talented player. And I do think that his control of the game is getting better. But he is still very, very young. Also, of course, Sam Simmons. You've got to watch him. He's getting the nod at eight in this competition, it seems. He scored like 70 tries in 120 games in the Premiership from number eight, which is absolutely ridiculous. But make sure to keep an eye out on England this year. They could surprise a few people. Or it could be a tough old season. Let's move on to the team that I believe that's going to finish in fourth. And that is us, the Welsh. I'm going to put Wales in fourth. I just think that the list of injuries is a massive concern. Of course, the likes of Alan Wynne-Jones is out. If you're looking in the back row, Navidi, uh, Tipperick are all out as well as Faletau. There's a lot of injuries in the back line as well. George North. Lee Halfpenny, of course, meaning we've had to move players into positions that they wouldn't tend to play. Of course, with the injury to Alan Wynn, Dan Bigger has been given the captaincy and it's going to be interesting to see how he can cope with that. Can he cope with that? Can he uh, find a way to talk to referees? Can he find a way to contain his emotions? Because that has been something he has struggled with in the, the past. I think it's going to be fascinating to see how we go this year. Of course, we first of all have to head over to Dublin to take on the Irish and then we welcome Scotland at home. And then we have to go to England. Then we have to welcome France and then we finish with Italy. It doesn't get easy throughout the tournament at all. But joining the Six Nations, of course, the big thing is momentum. Can you get that momentum to be able to ensure that then you can go into the next game, you're confident, your players are fit, you can then go on to there. But I just think that the injury list is really going to hamper us this season. Keep an eye out on Jack Morgan. Jack Morgan, for me, is going to be one of the stars of the show in the future for Wales. Plays along the back row, usually near the six or seven jersey. He has the highest number of tackles in the URC and also the highest number of turnovers. So at the breakdown, he's an absolute menace. Keep an eye out on him. In third place, I have gone with the Scots. I think Scotland have an absolute ability to win this competition. Absolutely, they do. It seems like a lot of their players are now coming into their prime. You look at the likes of Hogg. Ben Russell coming into their prime, Hamish Watson as well, uh, Johnny Gray, of course. There's a lot of great players in this Scotland team. And to be honest, from 1 to 15, it's pretty strong all across the board. Of course, we know the style that they want to play. They want to throw the ball about. They want to attack. They want to allow players to express themselves. And they've certainly got the players to do that, as I've said already, Finn Russell and Hogg, but also the likes of Darcy Graham, Sione Tupelotu, of course. They are all brilliant players who can show you a bit of magic here and there. They do face England first, and I think this game will really set the, set the way that this tournament is going to go for them. If they can get a big win against England, and then they head to the Principality, where they will probably be favourites for that game, and they win that game, all of a sudden things change very drastically. But if you lose on the opening weekend at home against England, it makes it really tough to recover from that. So of course they can do but it does make it very, very difficult. But I think Scotland could do something special in this year's tournament. But I really believe that they have to stick to their game plan, stick to the way they want to play. We saw it against South Africa in the autumns where they just couldn't break down the South African team. They ran out of ideas and then they reverted to a type of play, trying to out-physical bully them, which was never going to work against the Springboks. So I hope that they stick to their identity, the way they want to play, the way Gregor Townsend has got them playing. Of course, keep an eye out on so many players in this team. But of course, Cameron Redpath is the young player to keep an eye out on. Burst onto the scene last year in the Six Nations. One game against England was brilliant and then hasn't played much rugby since due to injury. And also, someone who's a little bit older but it will have a chance to earn his first cap is Ben Velikot. A scrum half player at Edinburgh. He's been lighting up the URC this season. He's fast, he's dynamic. He'll take him tap and go whenever he gets the opportunity to do it and you'll speed up the game. So do keep an eye out on him. Scotland fans, I'd be really eager to hear your predictions for the Six Nations in the comments down below. Let's head over to the Irish then. How do I see Ireland going? Well, I think they are going to finish in the second this season. Of course, had a fantastic autumn, and we really saw that evolution of the way they wanted to play. Before, very much the Schmidt style of play, very physical, very set-piece orientated. And what it feels with Andy Fowler is that he's taken that but he's just added little bits to it. He hasn't scrapped the whole identity of this Irish squad. He's just added little bits to it. And we saw that in the autumn where they're playing some lovely stuff. Puts in over 60 points on Japan, putting 40 points on Argentina, beating the All Blacks as well. And also they beat England pretty comfortably in last year's Six Nations. So it seems to be that they've been building and building towards this. 
of course, they have a host of incredible players. And the big player, of course, for them is Sexton at 10. He's going to want to control things. A lot of people say he's getting too old for it. I completely disagree. If he's still performing at the level required, then he deserves to be in there. Of course, he is captain. But a couple of youngsters to keep an eye on. James Hume in the centre. He's been on amazing form for Ulster this season. He played against Clermont in Europe was ridiculous playing against Leinster in the URC in a derby where we saw Ulster win at Leinster for the first time in so long he was exceptional that day getting the winning try so keep an eye out on him he's a really exciting player and the other one of course is Mac Hansen down at Connaught born in Australia but came to Ireland and is now eligible to play for the country he has been on an exhilarating form for Connor plays on the way very quick very loose and will look to attack whatever opportunity he gets and interestingly he starts on his debut against Wales on Saturday at the Aviva what a game to kick off and so that of course means that I believe that France are going to win the Six Nations this year I do believe they're going to do it now First thing to caveat with the French, there's always this thing about you don't know which French team is going to turn up. And there's an element of truth to that, for sure. You know, there were moments in last year's Six Nations, like against Scotland, where they just needed to kick the ball off. Just get rid of it and you win the game. And for some reason, that just didn't compute with them and they didn't do that. But then they had moments of brilliance, like we saw in the autumn, where they tore New Zealand apart. Untamak almost scored the greatest try I've ever seen in my life when they ran from their own 22. But we saw some brilliant tries, like of Pano. And of course, we've got to talk about him. It's Antoine Dupont, the best rugby player in the world currently, in my opinion. One world player of the year. He's been in absolutely exceptional form. He has been injured of recent times. He's only played one game since December, I believe it is. He played for Toulouse last weekend. Of course, he will start. They actually have a very kind fixture list to an extent. They welcome Italy to the start of France, first of all, which you'd expect them to win that very comfortably. They then face Ireland, which is probably one of their tougher games. And But they do welcome Ireland to the start of France. And they do welcome England to the Star de France, which is just absolutely massive for them. I do think it's really exciting times for French rugby. I really believe that they're going to do something special in this year's competition. I also believe that they have the right mindset on building towards the World Cup. We've seen the process under Galtier. And it's bearing fruit. It really is bearing fruit. And you've got to credit them for being patient with these players who are so successful at under 20 level and giving them the opportunity to shine at the top level. So there we go. That is my predictions for the Six Nations 2022. I don't believe there's going to be a grand slam. I just think that all the teams are so strong. Barring Italy are so strong this year. But I am back in France to win as always let me know your thoughts in the comments down below what do you make of my predictions where would you put them put them in the comments down below leave a like subscribe to the channel we've got so much content going on at the minute don't forget you can join the fancy rugby league that we've set up there's a link also down below and of course join me over the weekend for those watch longs it's gonna be great for i'm gonna have fans of different countries on and we're gonna have a chat all about the games enjoy the rugby the feast is finally here Enjoy the Six Nations. Thanks for watching.